Hi there, Simon here. Thank you for joining me today. And I'm sure that when you create a graph, you have a pretty thorough understanding of what the key messages will be. However, unless specific steps are taken to show these to your audience, it can leave these crucial insights uncovered. Let's take a look at an example. This data is from a company that's looking to track its overall complaint volumes over time. Each line represents a year from 2022 to part way through 2024. Now to provide the audience with as much detail as possible, a data table has been added, providing the granular numbers behind the lines in the chart. This is a fairly common approach, but with this amount of information and in this style, there is a risk that our audience isn't going to be able to recover those vital insights. Indeed, as I look at this graph, I'm left wondering, what is it that the original creator was looking to share? When I initially create a graph, I will typically spend a few moments writing a sentence or two, conveying the key takeaways that I can retrieve from it. Identifying these can help me understand how I might draw my audience's attention to them when I present the information. And now you've had a moment or two with this graph, I'm curious, what interesting insights have you managed to identify? Now, of course, you might have some different takeaways to me, and that's absolutely fine, but I've highlighted the following three. First of all, we have this high point of complaints in April 2022 of 430. Then we see a decreasing trend throughout 2022 into 2023 and the beginning of 2024, reducing to a record low of 118 in January 2024. But then we see from the beginning of 2024, January onwards, the complaint levels are beginning to rise. Now I have these outlined, I can begin to refine my visual with the intention of ensuring that these insights are clearly visible. To begin with, I'm going to remove the data table. Whilst having precise numbers available can be useful in some situations, I think in this case, it distracts from the main purpose of our graph, which is to see the trends of the data. I'm going to take the opportunity now to clean up the general formatting of my visual. This comprises a number of simple yet important formatting steps. First of all, I'm going to remove the chart border and grid lines. I'm going to clean up my horizontal and vertical axes before rewriting and aligning the chart title. Instead of using a legend, I'm going to take the opportunity to directly label the lines. And finally, format the lines by making them a little bit thicker and removing the color. Now I have a blank canvas to bring my takeaways to life. Reflecting on my first insight, the highest level of complaints that there in April, I can choose to highlight this with a combination of techniques. I'll update the title, make the line darker and add an annotation. Reading the title now, I have a clear understanding of what I'm looking for and can find that information easily in the view. Now this is a good start, but I feel we can improve the visual further by adjusting its layout. Currently we have each year plotted separately, so it's a little bit difficult to assess the longer term trend. Changing the horizontal axis to a consistent timeline with just one line will allow me to bring my other takeaways to life. With this view, it's far easier to see that downward trend of complaints that began in April 2022 and continued all the way through to January 2024. My second takeaway, once again, I can bring this to life using similar focusing techniques as before. Note I've used blue here, which conveys a slightly more friendly and more optimistic tone than the sterile black from the previous example. More appropriate for the good news that's being shared with this takeaway. Now, if you're curious on how some of these changes have been made, I recommend checking out our on-demand video course. Over 75 minutes delving into real world strategies and techniques to enhancing your PowerPoint presentations. I'll put a link in the description, but if you use code YouTube10, you'll receive 10% off that sign up price. All right, let's tackle our third takeaway now. Despite the good news, we should be wary that this most recent data does show an increase in the number of complaints. It could well be, of course, this is a short term anomaly, but it's certainly worth highlighting and suggesting investigation occurs to better understand the increase. I'm going to use a different color here, orange. It's a more attention grabbing hue than the blue I used previously. We've managed to make changes to our visuals to incorporate each of those main takeaways, but what if we want to combine all of those insights into one? Well, depending on how you communicate this information, there are a couple of different approaches you can take. 
First, if you're presenting live, you can articulate each of these key takeaways with the use of animation, giving you an opportunity to talk through additional background context and giving your audience a chance to understand one aspect of the visual before moving on to the next. Or if this information needs to be conveyed using a static one-page overview, we can use a complementary colour set, one with a high degree of contrast which allows both sides of the story to be presented at the same time. And as we aren't presenting this information live, we can include some of the aspects that we might have said verbally by way of annotations and additional context. And of course, including our final recommended action. We started with a visual that had a lot of information but didn't really convey anything meaningful. But by taking a step back and thinking about those important observations, we've been able to adapt our graph, bringing each of those insights to life in a clear way for our audience. For more examples of visual transformations, do check out our Makeovers playlist. And until next time, thank you very much for watching and have a great day.